When I'm creating books, my goal is to get the work done efficiently and quickly, but without sacrificing quality. One way I've been able to accomplish this is with the help of master pages. If you are a fan of Affinity Publisher, as I am, and you want to leverage how you use the software, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Samantha, and today's video is all about working with master pages in Affinity Publisher. I'll also be revealing the name of the person who has won the Affinity Publisher giveaway. If you want to find out if that person is you, please watch this video in its entirety. Let's get into it. A master page is synonymous or comparable to a template. This is because we can feed a master page with specific elements that we want to appear throughout a manuscript and then apply these elements to other pages with a simple click. For example, I'm thinking about creating a journal with 120 ruled pages. Instead of copying and pasting the ruled lines to 119 different pages, I could simply create a master page, add all my ruled lines to it, and then apply it to all the other pages with a single click. Sounds convoluted? I know. But once you see this in action, it will make perfect sense. I promise. Why should you consider using master pages when designing in Affinity Publisher? Several reasons, but I'll mention three. This is the biggest advantage to using master pages. There are some situations in which you'll be working with hundreds of pages for a manuscript. You might find that you'll need to repeat some elements on specific pages. I remember when I was creating my first word search book with a thousand puzzles. Yes, you heard right, 1,000 puzzles. The design of the interior was standard, although the puzzles kept changing. Creating a master page with all my design elements saved me a lot of time as there was no need for me to copy and paste the same design to a thousand different spreads. Once you start getting crazy with your manuscript in terms of the length of the book, you need to work with master pages. If you're creating a children's book with a few pages, you might not need to create a master page. Let's say you're creating a journal with a standard quote, nothing flashy, nothing unique. Using a master page ensures that the quote appears in the same order, with the same alignment, fonts, spacing, the whole shebang. So you wouldn't need to edit the quote every single instance it's added to a page. And if you should choose to use a unique quote on each page, you could simply add a text placeholder on your master page. By doing things this way, your interior's design will be consistent throughout. Have you ever created a large manuscript and then had to make the same changes to several other pages? Nerve wracking. This is where master pages come in handy. These templated pages allow you to make changes to a single page, which is the master page, and this is then reflected on all the other pages it is applied to. Where can you find master pages when working in Affinity Publisher? Typically, master pages will appear on the left of your user interface. Now, if you're not seeing your master page or any of your pages as is depicted here, Simply go to View, Studio, and ensure that the Pages option is selected. You will know that it is selected when there is a tick beside it. So as you can see, 
all my pages are here and just above the publication or content pages you will find your master pages this is where things get interesting as i'll be walking you through how you can use master pages in real life book publishing scenarios now i have a demo document opened in affinity publisher that i will be using just to show how master pages can be applied there is nothing unique or interesting about this specific document i simply chose to use it because i did not want to set up a new page now as you can see i was working on creating templates for a habit tracker but i decided to just use this to demonstrate the point i'm trying to bring across now i'll be showing you three demonstrations the first one i'm going to be creating a dummy master page to show you how you can apply a master page to several other pages typically in affinity publisher normal pages can either be referred to as publication or content pages. So anything within this section from pages one to seven is, is pretty much referred to as my publication or content page. The master pages is located above the, the content pages. In this document, I only have a single master page, which is called Master A. Now, if I wanted to change the name of this master page, I could simply go ahead, double click and add the name, name change and hit enter. Let's correct this name change. So this is my master page. Now, when I was creating this document, I was not focused on a master page because I was simply creating different, different habit trackers for different months. So as you can see, if I should hover my mouse above each page, you're not seeing any indication that a master page has been applied to these pages. So there are no master pages applied to this one. Typically, when a master page is applied to a content page and you hover your mouse above the content page, it will indicate what master page is applied to it. Now, let's demonstrate this. I'm going to create a second master page and I'm going to do so by clicking the add master option. And I'm going to change the name of my master to test dummy master page. And this is just for the demonstration. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit okay. Just below my name change master page is another page as you can see, test dummy master page. Now on this master page, I am simply going to add a bit of text. I'm also going to add an image and probably other elements. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to activate my grids just so that I can uh, see a bit more clearly. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to add a text to this. And this is going to say, this is a dummy master page. I am also going to add an image to this page. Any image will do. As I've mentioned, it's just to demonstrate how you can apply it to all the other pages. So the image I will be using is stored on my computer. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to grab the image. This is something I created. And if you've been following my channel, you would, uh, you would have seen a video showing how to create something like this. So I'm going to zoom out 
and this is it. I'm just aligning this on the screen. And I'm just going to go ahead and add some random elements to it. So my master dummy page is complete. Let's apply it to other pages. Now, what I'm going to do is I, since I will be using my templates, I really do not want to mess up my templates. So what I'm going to do is to create 10 other pages after page seven. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new page and the number of pages I'm going to be adding is 10. And I'm going to add it after page seven. Now, if you should look closely at this section, you'd realize that at the bottom, it gives me the option to apply a master page. So I could simply uh, use the, the arrow and apply the test dummy master page. Or I could simply leave this as is, click OK and apply my master page another way. So I'm going to show you another way to apply it. And this way is going to be very handy when you have, when you've already created all your pages to, to start a document. So you'd right click on a page, apply master, select the master. In this case, I want to use test domain master page. And I want to apply it to specific pages. So I'm going to apply it from page eight. Let's look back to see how many pages I have. Page eight to page 17. That's where I want to apply it. Page eight to page 17. Now, if you should look at the bottom, it says replace existing. Now, what this does is to override or remove any content or information that is present on the publication page we're adding the master page to. But since I do not have anything on the pages I'm going to apply my test domain master page to, this really doesn't matter. So whether I leave it tick or untick, it will not affect the document. So I'm going to ensure that a test dummy master page is selected. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit OK. It says target pages differ in size to the master. Now you will get this error if your pages aren't aligned properly. I did not align my pages properly from the get go when I was, as I've mentioned before, I was simply creating this document for a habit tracker and I was only going to use the templates, not necessarily the entire document. So this isn't really relevant or important. So I'm just going to click yes. Even if I click no, it really doesn't matter. Now, as you can see, my test dummy master page has been applied to page eight all the way to page 17. Now, if I should hover above this page, it will indicate that the test dummy master page is applied to it. So let's do that. See, test dummy master page. So this is how you apply a master page to several other pages. 
Now, if I should go back to my master page, right click on the mouse, right click, master page, apply master. Based on the options here, I can apply my test dummy master page to all the pages, odd pages, or even pages. So test these options out because I do believe that they will come. They will be handy or nifty features when you're working with a large manuscript. So I'm just going to cancel this because I'm not ready to use that option. Now, let's say I wanted to make changes to a publication page that has been applied a master page, but I don't want to make the change directly from the master page because I want to keep most of the content. I only want to edit one page. So let's say if I want to edit page 11. I do not like all the shapes that are at the bottom. In fact, I want to remove one of the stars so that I have two stars and two cogs. And I also want to apply my teacup. Is this a teacup or a teapot? Whichever. Let's say I want to apply my image more to the left on my page. And I also wanted to add text to the right. But I do not want to edit my master page at all. I only want to adjust page 11. How can this be done? Simple. All you have to do is ensure that the page you want to edit or make changes to is selected. So in this case, I'm working with page 11. Also, you will want to ensure that you have access to the layers panel. If you're not seeing it on the right, you can go to view, studio, and ensure that layers is selected. Now, once you've identified the layers panel, simply click on it, right click, and choose edit detached. Now, what this option is going to do is allow you to make changes to this page without affecting the master page or the original page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this to the right, sorry, the left. I'm also going to shrink it and I'm going to add a text box here. And I'm going to insert fill a text. So that's it. I also want to remove this cog, the star, sorry. And I'm just going to align this so that it appears centered. I'm also going to change the color. Let's to brown. And that's it. So I'm going to hit the finish option once I'm done editing my publication page. Now, if I should go back to my master page, you will see that it has not been disturbed or it has not been edited. So let's go back to my master page. This is my master page. And as you can see, it is just the way I created it before, but if you look at page 11, you realize that it's different from my master page. And all the other pages were not disturbed or affected. So what if I wanted to apply another master page to a page, to a publication page that already has a master page? Could this be done? Absolutely. So I'm going to go back to my master pages and this blank or empty master page that I have called name change. I'm going to click on it because I will be adding some text to this page. Nothing fancy, nothing specific. 
I'm just going to add some random stuff because I want you to, to, to know how you can apply a master page to a page that already has another master page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some information. So this is the only content, well, not the only content, I'm going to add my name at the very top. Let's put this in the middle and have everything centered. So what I'm going to do is to apply this master page on top of all my other pages. And when I say all my other pages, I mean starting from page eight. So I'm going to right click, apply master, and I'm going to ensure that the name change is selected, which is already there. And I'm going to, because I'm not applying it to all my pages, I'm going to select specified pages. And I'm going to start from page 8 to page 17. Now, this is where you want to, to take note. This section says replace existing. Now, if I, if I leave this ticked, what this is going to do is just remove everything that I already have on my document. So I'm going to ensure that this option is deselected and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit OK. Let's look at it. As you can see, my master page has been applied to all my other pages. Samantha Boris was here, everything applied to it. And page 11 is the same. And if I should hover above uh, a page, it will show that the test dummy master page and the name change is actually applied to this particular page. So what I'm going to do is, let's say, for example, you want to remove a master page from a publication page. To do this, right click and clear masters. This is an empty page. Now a quick way for you to apply a master page to a publication page is to simply click on the master page you want to, to use and drag it to that page. So I want to apply this to page eight. I'm going to drag it and leave it. It's that simple. So these are just different ways you can use or apply master pages. Now, let's say we're not done yet. Yep, very extensive video. So let's say I am all the way, let's say I had 100 pages on my document. And let's pretend that page 17 is page 100. I do not want the hassle to really leave this page, to go back to the master page to make edits. I can simply edit the master page from this page. To do this, I would simply go back to my layers panel, ensure that the page is selected, 
go back to my layers panel and as you can see here i have two master pages applied so you will need to indicate which page you are editing or want to edit so i want to edit my test dummy master page i'm going to ensure that it's selected right click and i'm going to use the option edit linked i'm going to go ahead and i am going to remove the cogs or sorry the shapes from the master page and i'm going to hit finish once i'm done now if i should go back to the master page or even look at my other content pages you will realize that the change took effect the change has been made see all my shapes at the bottom were removed and this is the master page it was also removed from the master page so let's move on to the next demonstration and i'll show you how to really use master pages when creating a journal or a notebook. So for this demonstration, I am actually going to create a new document and I am going to give this a new width and a new height. I will not be creating uh, specifications for KDP or any other platform. I'm simply doing a quick demonstration or walkthrough. This time around, I'm going to ensure that the facing pages option is selected and I am going to start with 120 pages. As obvious, my master page has been created. It's called Master A and the spread or the pages they are facing and it's the same thing for the entire document now i did things this way because i wanted you to see things from another perspective no this this journal is not going to be tidy or it's not going to be my best work because as i've mentioned i'm just going through this demonstration so that you'll have a working or practical understanding of how to use master pages i'm not showing you how to set up uh your page in affinity or whatever or anything else we are talking about master pages so that is what i'm focused on so as i've mentioned i will be creating a journal so i'm going to ensure that my my grids are showing because i want to be able to add lines the lines will not be perfect and I will just be adding them across the page. It doesn't matter how I align them on the page. This is just for demonstration. You will need to pay attention to Amazon's guidelines when you're publishing for KDP, but not me. This video is already pretty long. So this is just to demonstrate. So if I should scroll down, you would see that all my lines they've been applied to the entire document so i would not so essentially this saves me time because i would not need to copy and paste anything at all and this is because when i was creating my pages i ensured that i had 120 pages because this is what would make up my journal and i also ensured that my master page was applied to all my other pages so the only page i would need to work on is the master page and automatically everything would populate to my other pages this is amazing to me because 
I can create so many different journals and variations in record in record time. You know, instead of spending a day creating a, an interior for a book, I could just get this done in no time. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to create a second master page. I'm going to, but this time around, it's not going to be facing. And I'm going to call this one quotes. This is the last demonstration. I think this video is quite long. So I'm going to go ahead. This is going to be a single page. Let's click OK. Now, let's pause for a minute. I am going to reveal the winner of the giveaway. Stay tuned. So for the giveaway, I have 11 names that I will be putting into this tool and this tool will randomly select a name for me. It's called wheelofnames.com. So I'm going to grab my names and I'm going to add them to the tool and then spin. So these are all the names I have. I am super excited. This is my first giveaway and there are many more giveaways to come. I'm thinking about doing a giveaway with Canva, maybe up to a year. So if you want to be a candidate, please continue supporting my channel. So I think this video is pretty long. So I'm just going to go ahead and I am going to spin the wheel. Let's go. And the winner is Emmanuel Ajala. Yay! Congratulations. No, Emmanuel, please, please, please reach out to me. Please go ahead and reach out to me so that I can see to it that you get access to your affinity software. Thank you so much for your support. Please continue watching. Please continue commenting. Now let's go back to the tutorial to wrap things up. So what I want to accomplish with my publication pages is to really add a quote, a standard quote, nothing unique to the left pages. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to, to put something here. So this is just going to be applied to one side of my one side of my master page. So let's do this. Apply master. And this would be, let's go all the way up. So this would be an odd page, even page, odd page, even page. So I want to apply to all my even pages. So I'm going to apply master. And I'm going to apply it to even pages. And I'm not going to replace the existing because I want to add it on top of uh, the page or the master that is already there. And this master is called quotes. Okay. So let's look at it. I'm going to push this to the very top. And let's increase the size. As I've mentioned, I'm not creating anything for publishing. I'm just showing you how you can use it. So, oops. And remember, please ensure that whatever you're doing, you adhere to Amazon's guidelines. So on every odd page, my quote will appear. 
Now, let's say I also want to add a master page where I can add a unique quote. What I'm going to do is to create another master page and I'm going to call this unique quote. And it's going to be a single. It's not going to be front facing. Hit OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a text placeholder. What this is going to do is give me the option or allow me to type in my quote when I am ready to, to do so. So this is the, the frame text tool, or I call it the text placeholder. What I could do here is I could go ahead and fill this with filler text just so that I know exactly where I will be adding my, my unique quote. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply it to my odd pages. Unique quote, add pages, deselect, replace existing, and hit OK. As you can see, this has been applied to all my other pages. While this page is not editable unless I edit on this side, unless I edit using, using the option I showed you previously, I can actually edit the text in this one without affecting the master page and this is because the placeholder allows me to add the information without affecting all the other pages so you just simply add the quotes you want to add and go about your business now that's it for this video if you've learned anything about master pages please 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 if this video has been enlightening for you and if you're going to apply the suggestions recommended in my tutorial, please consider liking this video, sharing this video, and don't forget to subscribe as that would help me grow the channel. I love you for watching. Thank you so much for your continued support. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.